he basically tells Noah the same thing again that he told Adam at the beginning of, of, the, of the Genesis story. So, fine. And then he, he tells them a bunch of rules, which I could go into, but at the moment I won't. But I want to show you that... Basically what God... I guess I should do this to some degree. God lays out a bunch of rules, so you could think about it as a precursor to what happens in the story of Exodus, where the Ten Commandments are revealed. So this is like a foreshadowing of that story. Noah makes the proper sacrifices, and God says, okay, fine, here's the rules. Follow these rules, and, and then they're laid out, and things will go okay with you. That's the covenant, that's the agreement between the... you could say that's the agreement between the individual and the spirit of the state. That's one way of looking at it, but it's not enough, because it isn't merely the spirit of the state that's being negotiated with. It's the spirit of the state, it's the spirit of that which transcends the state, and it's the spirit of the moral order that's within the individual. All three of those things are being negotiated simultaneously. The proper sacrifices are made, the proper rules are laid out, and the, and the idea is that there'll be a good balance between order and chaos as a consequence as long as people continue to play by the rules. So that's the offering, fundamentally. So, fine, that seems to work out. And then, this one, I think, is extremely interesting. It's also very short. It took me a very, very long time to, to understand this. All right, so this is after the story of Noah. So what happens is, you get this situation where things descend into chaos and there's a great flood. So that's sort of like the ultimate chaos story. And I think of it as a... It's, it, there's, so you imagine when things fall apart, one possibility is that they fall into chaos. The other possibility is something like they become hyper-conceptualized and hyper-orderly. And so then the state itself, which would be the antidote to chaos, actually becomes a source of pathology. And I think that that's what's being hinted at in the story of the Tower of Babel. So here's what happens, is that human beings, I'll read it to you. Um, this, is, this has to do with Noah's descendants. It's, it's a flip into another story. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east. Oh, yes. And all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. New story. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Everybody's getting along fine in their tribal organization, let's say. It's homogenous. They can all speak to one another, and they all speak the same language. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Okay, so what's happening here? <clears throat> 